A small team from the New Zealand Defence Force is being deployed to the Red Sea in the Middle East as tensions continue to escalate over Houthi attacks. The six highly trained personnel will help protect shipping routes and will be involved in bombing targets in the parts of Yemen controlled by the Iranian-backed rebels. The Prime Minister says the Houthi attacks are illegal, unacceptable and profoundly destabilising. His political editor, Jenna Lynch. US and UK Air Forces striking missile and surveillance sites in Yemen overnight, targeting Houthi rebels who've been attacking ships in the Red Sea, a major trade route. And New Zealand is joining the action. Today we are announcing that we are sending six NZDF personnel to support any future military action against Houthi targets in Yemen and the Red Sea. Houthis, Iran-backed rebels, have been attacking ships in the Red Sea since November. The Houthis say their targets are Israeli ships. They've also been firing missiles and drones toward Israel since the beginning of the war in Gaza. But the Red Sea attacks on commercial ships are affecting global trade routes. This is in response to Houthi actions which threaten commercial shipping. Freedom of navigation is an integral part of New Zealand's national prosperity and our trade security. The US has been carrying out counter-strikes. Now they want our help, the US making a direct request for assistance. So it is a logical consequence that we join international partners in tackling this ongoing threat to security. The government says the six Defence Force troops will be involved in a collective self-defence of ships in the Middle East from operational headquarters in the region and elsewhere. The Houthi attacks are illegal, they're unacceptable and they're profoundly destabilising. Piracy and threatens the existence of hundreds of millions of innocent consumers worldwide. This is a very important issue for New Zealand as a country that is most dependent on trade. New Zealand's more recent defence deployments have been in a peacekeeping or training capacity. Our personnel will support coalition forces in carrying out precision attacks on identified military targets. They will be at operational headquarters in the wider Middle East region and elsewhere, but they will not go into Yemen. No NZDF personnel will enter Yemen. And they'll be there to prov provide the targeting and the precision targeting. They're not there to be involved in combat. So will they, will they be involved in any combat at all? We're not expecting them to be. We're not certainly not expecting that they will be going. And we've si simply said they are not going into Yemen. So they're not there for that. They're there for targeting purposes only. But that doesn't mean our forces' actions won't result in strikes on Yemen. Where have they needed to be? Um, that's really clear. And Foreign Minister Winston Peters says this action should not be conflated with our response to the Israel-Palestine conflict. Peters today made a statement that New Zealand was deeply concerned at recent comments made by members of the Israeli government that fuel tensions and imperil the two-state solution. New Zealand has always supported a two-state solution, he said. In the uh, Prime Minister's statement that he did not see uh, the two-state solution being viable. Mm. It was the bluntness of that statement which caused us to repeat what we've viewed and said for a long, long time. Though the government would not commit to fully recognising Palestine as a state. Well, we, we haven't recognised Palestine as a state because actually there isn't actually, I would put it to you, a functioning government there in, a, in, a, in, a, in an actual state in place. Uh, what we are very supportive of and continue to be very supportive of is the two-state solution. Tiptoeing around the Gaza Strip but taking to the Red Sea with vigour. You just can't just keep the peace. Sometimes those who offend the peace have got to be stopped as, as offenders. And that's the stand we're making. But this is actually about values. It's about us standing up for things that we believe in. And we can either talk about them or we can actually do something about it as well and actually make sure that we put real capability alongside our words. And that's what we're doing here. Values tests don't come bigger than conflict. Well, Jenna joins us now. Kia ora, Jenna. How did the Prime Minister handle this call? As I said there, it does not get a bigger call to make than a Prime Minister making a decision to send New Zealand Defence Force personnel to a conflict zone. And the mission statement of this deployment feels a little bit more direct than some of our more modern deployments, which have, at the outset at least, been more couched in language like peacekeeping or training. This feels a lot more direct with the government saying in black and white that those personnel are there to identify identify and strike targets. Now, it sounds like a relatively small 
employment, six personnel, but this is about New Zealand pulling its weight among those traditional allies, something that the Prime Minister and Foreign Minister have been talking about since being sworn in as a new government. This deployment is set to conclude at the end of July. Political Editor-General Lynch, live from Parliament. Tēnā koe.